Button Art AI is a generative AI platform where you can build a beautiful, fully functional website ready to launch in just 20 seconds. Yes, we launched like one year back and we have more than 200,000 users as of now. Can we build like complex apps like Uber or Airbnb without building a team of thousands of developers? Can we build a system that, you know, if I know what I want to build, can we build an agent that can work as a developer? Uh, an AI agent that is as smart as a developer and has learned coding by you know training it on the data set and if I am the instructor can I tell the AI agent to build something and then I can tell how to edit it. Hello everyone I am super excited to kick off this series of interviews. What I have been noticed is a lot of friends of mine and a lot of people have asked about AI and there's not much people talking about what's going on here in San Francisco. I'm Rowan, I'm super excited to start this with Pratika. Thank you for joining. Thank uh, you for having me here. Thank you. Can you talk about what is Butternut AI? Sure, so Butternut AI is a generative AI platform where you can build a beautiful, fully functional website ready to launch in just 20 seconds. Wow, and I saw it working, it's super nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we launched like one year back and we have more than 200,000 users as of now. Wow. wow, that's so cool. And can you tell me a little bit about your background, how you got here and show this awesome product? Sure, so my background, um, Okay, I'll start from my childhood where, you know, my dad is a businessman, so I have, we have never seen Saturdays or Sundays at home. So it was always like your passion for work was always there. And I started coding uh, very early on in life. I was very passionate about mathematics, coding, and painting. You know, the euphoria you get from creating something from scratch. So very early on in my life, I knew, you know, I would be creating something that could go into millions of homes. And I started earning very early on uh, via coding on internet. And I knew that's going to be the path for me. So. That's how I ended up doing my undergrad in computer science and then uh, my love for uh, you know, high level calculus and coding combined led me to pursue my master's in AI. And then you know, I worked for a couple of companies and then entre entrepreneurship was, I think, always in my DNA and that's where I landed up, yeah, building that, stuff. That's cool. Before you built Bernard AI, you have building two products before, right? Mm -hmm. How was it? What did you learn from this? And what, this, what brings this for this big success you have right now? Yeah, so uh, yeah, before Butternut, I built a D2C uh, company and uh, uh, that got into Y Combinator. And what interesting thing we did was we did e-commerce over WhatsApp and we uh, built bots to um, gamify or to automate that entire journey from somebody seeing our ad to somebody purchasing over WhatsApp. And uh, yeah, and before that we built a performance marketing agency. Um, uh, and what I've learned from building uh, stuff, it's like, first of all, you must have, you know, uh, once you step into entrepreneurship, you m must not have that panic button where something goes wrong. You're like, oh, this is the end of the world. I'm going to close my startup and that's it. Uh, I think as you evolve, as you become mature, you understand that uh, the life of an entrepreneur, the life of a founder is like tackling uh, 100 fires a day and you should be okay with it, you know? Uh, so that's, that's what I've learned. Just be patient, just, you know, just treat everything as a problem which has a solution and you just need to figure it out. And I think this is my advice to anybody and everybody who's starting up. But I won't advise everybody to just go and start a startup. It's like you should be figuring out the problem you're solving or you should be figuring out what's new you can give into the market that people would like to pay for. And only if you feel you are, you know, comfortable living without a salary for maybe a few months or a few years, uh, and you have that kind of passion where you're like just uh, immersed in your work, only then go ahead and uh, step into entrepreneurship. Otherwise, having a job that you love is an amazing life to have. I'm pretty sure you cross path with a lot of entrepreneurs that has success stars, but also fail. What I can learn from this, uh, for the fail, uh, entrepreneurs or fail ideas that some entrepreneurs already had for we prevent this into the future? Hmm. So I, I would say there is, uh, you know, you fail only when you stop. So, so many people like, you know, you know about the three companies I started, but uh, behind the hood, I think I have started 
many more things, which now I just call as projects because they didn't really work. So, uh, yeah, for people who, um, you know, who might not have had uh, that success, what is success? Success is when you find your product market fit, when customers start using your product, when they start talking about it and they stick to your product. So how do you find that? You find that when, first of all, you are building a startup that is solving a problem. Mm -hmm. And second of all, you are staying closer to your customers. And this is what I've learned from Paul Graham, uh, you know, from reading his essays. It's like when you're building something, don't spend like two to three years just building it and thinking, oh, I'm going to make the perfect product and then going to take it out in the market and everybody is going to love it. No, you're, you know, build an MVP, launch it, get it into the market, talk to your potential customers. Like don't talk to your uh, friends or family because, oh my God, they're, everybody's amazing, right? They'll say, oh my God, this is amazing, I love it. No, they are not your customers. So go find where your customer, uh, potential customers spend time, go, you know, showcase your product and l learn, you know, from their feedback, see if they are willing to pay and then just keep on iterating and you'll hit your PMF. Now going to the other side for the success stories, what uh, what do you see for the entrepreneurs that create something that it was very successful? What was the path? I think the path is similar. Like somebody who knows, like what is, the, so when you're building a startup, you know, it looks very fancy on the outside where you're like, oh, I'm gonna build something very fancy and throw around these fancy words going to get featured here and there. But what's at the core of it, uh, like gusto? What did it build? It made payroll easier for everybody. What did Uber do? Like, you know, on both the sides, it helped people like us uh, book rights. And then it also uh, got into the gig economy. So it's like, what is the problem at core you're solving? If you know that, you know, then yes, you'll be successful. You could have a soft pivot or a hard pivot in it, but you will be evolving every day. You will be learning. So I think this is the only uh, difference I've seen. You know, successful founders, they stay very close to their customers and understand them. And people uh, who just launch product and not really care about their customers, uh, sometimes, you know, yeah, the products, most of the times, they don't end up working. For Y Combinator, probably we learn, you learn a lot about this, but what other things that you learn through this Y Combinator journey? Uh, build something and launch something really fast. Talk to your customers and then set deadlines for yourself. Because when you work within a deadline, you really ought to work way harder and smarter than when you don't have a deadline. Like w what if you know, you say, okay, I can achieve this in a uh, year, but then you think, okay, can, how can I achieve this in two months? That's the power of a deadline. That's the power of building a startup. How can you move fast? How can you break things? And how can you be so hacky around uh, different things? And, you know, just build it. Did you build uh, Butternut AI here in San Francisco? I did build Butternut AI in San Francisco. Do you agree that here is like a bubble? A lot of good ta talents is here and then not from outside, uh, not anywhere else. Do you think that there are any other like communities AI outside here in San Francisco? What do you think about it? See, there are uh, different different communities across the world, but I believe this is like um, the center of gravity for AI. And anybody who is uh, deeply passionate about building in AI ends up being here, either living permanently or for a while they you know come and go. So this is the epicenter of AI, and what you hear, you know, the kind of talks you hear every day. I have not heard uh, about so much about AI in anywhere else in any part of the world. So this is the epicenter. This is where things, you know, people are building hundreds of different tools in different domains every day, and they are trying to just do it very fast and create a revolution. How was bringing the idea for Budget Up AI? Mm -hmm. the process of creation and how do you validate the market? Because I know it was a super nice strategy. And <laughs> it was boom. not a strategy. It just, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> and then yes, after that, it was strategy. <laughs> yeah, so the idea of Butternut 
So the thing was, I'm a coder, and then you know, I've built so many websites in my life. And uh, when you know, transformers came, the world became very intelligent. And uh, being an AI engineer, I could see the revolution which is ahead of us. Like people might not see the direct impact of it, uh, but in five years across the world, people are going to see how AI is going to change their day-to-day -day life. So it was like, you know, uh, as a coder, it was like, can we? build like um, complex apps like Uber or Airbnb without building a team of thousands of developers? Can we build a system that, you know, if I know what I want to build, can we build an agent that can work as a developer? Uh, an AI agent that is as smart as a developer and has learned coding by, you know, training it on the data set. And if I am the instructor, can I tell the AI agent to build something and then I can tell how to edit it? So that was the vision, like how, you know, that's the moonshot we are taking. Like in two years, people will be able to build very complex apps uh, without thousands of developers and with using Butternut and a few people around it. Um, but then it was like, okay, how do we start? So how do we start talking to people? How do we get into the market? So websites, they were the lowest hanging fruit because whenever there's a business, um, you know, a startup or a well-established business, they all need websites. They need a digital and, presence. Yeah, and even in 2023, uh, it was like, why is it so hard to build a website? Me being a coder, it was never a delight for me whenever I had to build a website. It, you know, the first thought was, can I outsource it to somebody? And then the second was like, no, I think that is going to be a bigger pain, so let me build it myself. And I've never been delighted. The drag and drop experience has never been great. So that's uh, what led me, you know, when this uh, AI revolution came. Like, can we automate that? Can, instead of spending months or weeks building a website, can you do something in just a few seconds? And can you launch it in just a few minutes? So that was the idea. And that's how we built the MVP. And we launched it. And um, as I mentioned, you know, it's always like you need to stay closer to your customers. You need to talk to them, get their feedback, whether you are on the right track or not. So I, I, you know, when we were like a little ready to launch the MVP, I put up a tweet on Twitter saying, hi, I have built this uh, new tool, Butterna.ai, where you can build your websites in under 20 seconds. Why don't you try it and give me your feedback? So what I was hoping was, 30, 40 people in my network or maybe their second connections, they will try it and I will learn, you know, if I am in the right direction or not. But what ended up happening was the tweet blew up and it went viral. Our, we were on free AWS tier and it crashed. And we're like, okay, <laughs> you know, so many people, they just started building so many different websites on Butternut. And I think the magic they could see in like 20 seconds, everybody was quite surprised. and. In those 48 hours, uh, we also launched on Product Hunt, and we ended up becoming uh, the top product. And I think after that, it's like we have never spent a dime on marketing. It's all word of mouth. It's all you know, different newsletters and podcasts picked up, and now we are at 200,000 users. It's a lot of work to develop a website. Myself also, I have been doing a lot of websites. Even the company I'm working on, they develop websites. It takes average, at minimum, 30 days. 30 days. Should develop a website. Could it be for a dealership, could it be for a customer, a final customer. It takes a lot of time. And you just reduce this a lot. And what is the difference between uh, Wix uh, and other Square platforms? Squarespace, yeah. <laughs> this is what everybody asks me. And then I say, why don't you go and try Butternut? And you'll see the difference. So what happens is, uh, since you have already built on different platforms, you'll see other platforms are not intelligent platforms. They know nothing about the, your business. They know nothing. They would, what would they do? You'll go on their platform, they'll give you 100 different types of templates. And then you'll pick those templates, you'll put in, you know, build your content, get those images, then you struggle with SEO, you don't know what should uh, happen. And when you want to uh, customize it with something more advanced, you either need to know coding or you'll end up hiring somebody. But Butternut, how is it different is, we at Butternut, we have passed millions of websites across the internet to understand when you put in your keywords, when you tell us about your business, we try to understand your business in and out. We try to understand your demography. We try to understand your business category. We try to understand what are the SEO keywords your website should be talking, uh, targeting, your business should be targeting. What should be the layout of the website? What should be the color scheme? You know, each, each business is very different. 
So we have built this inti intelligent agent, uh, intelligent model that could understand your business and it can help you build the perfect website that is ready to launch and also make it more SEO optimized. So this is the difference where you, know, you have blank templates and you spend like weeks making it better or customizing it, whereas we give you something that is ready-made, we understand you, and we build something for you, personalized for you, and then definitely you can customize whatever you want to you know, change. So that's the difference. How do you classify? Because one website for a lawyer is going to be a website for uh, some type of uh, different services yeah. and also for different type of business. Mm -hmm. How are you able to categorize it? How are you able to, to teach the machine? what is the difference between one another? It's all data that, uh, you know, you, you build like a model. And then what do you do is you infuse, like I said, we pass millions of websites. So you infuse that data into that model. And then the model by repetitively, you know, it will try to understand. It will try to build a pattern. It could be a classification thing. It could be a regression thing. It, it will try to understand what are, what are the different categories. What is the difference? What is like, you know, for us, it is the code part. So how does that happen? So this is all what you do with the data and what is the model you build on top of it that makes... Uh, anything intelligent, that is what AI is. So yeah, this is what happens behind the hood. Yeah, we train our data, uh, sorry, we train our model with millions of data and then uh, once you build website on it, how you interact with it, what you do, all that feedback is sent back uh, to our model so that it keeps on becoming better and better with each user interaction. Right, and then what was your challenges on the face to build the model? Mm -hmm. What do you think is like something that uh, takes more time to expect or something that you're not accounting as uh, on the developer side, on the development side? On development side, see with the transformers, with all these LLMs, the content was not a problem. So we were not trying to reinvent that part. Uh, but, you know, building a model for code was something uh, that was not there in the market and building that took time. So, uh, yeah, I think that that was, that uh, took time, that is still that still takes time, and but for content and for images, those things are kind of done, and we reuse those things. What about the fruit, the future for Butternut? What do you think about what is the next features that are going to add in the product, or what do you think about this? Okay, so uh, next feature. So we recently, last month, we launched. Uh, a multi-page website. In fact, with a lot more new features, you can have analytics, you can embed code, all those things. So that we launched, uh, you know, last month. And now we are launching blogs, how you can create very SEO optimized uh, blogs using AI, where you input uh, your ID of the blog and our uh, AI will create the entire blog with titles which are SEO optimized for your uh, target audience. And then we are going to get into e-commerce. And yeah, two years down the line, it's the vision is definitely, you know, people like you and me building complex softwares just using Butternut AI, that's all. Nice. And what about AI itself? What do you think, you have been in the, this industry for years, have a master in this, on, on this. It's growing so fast, everyone knows that. Mm. And what is your thoughts about the future? I think the future is going to be very, very interesting. Like when the Industrial Revolution came, you know, we got, uh, I mean, a lot of blue collar jobs uh, went away. With the, with the AI, I think it is going to impact a lot of white collar jobs because now we, we don't just have machines. We have intelligent machines that could uh, train themselves on millions of data points and can become more intelligent than a human being. So I think in the future, uh, we, we won't be doing a lot of uh, redundant work that we do. We still do in our day-to-day -day life. Rather, uh, emphasis will be on becoming more and more creative uh, because you'll have all the tools uh, you want and those are intelligent tools that you can use to create anything, but what to create, how to impact uh, people. I think that's going to be the core in another five to eight years. Pratika, thank you so much for being here to share your knowledge. I really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, asking me such interesting questions and I had a great time talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.